Hey guys, I just wanted to do a little quick one here. Talk a little bit of philosophy, how, or my personal philosophy on the, what we do here in a sales role. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is attitude, I guess, attitude in general. Um, you got to stay positive. Okay. Don't, 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 don't get angry or upset when things don't go your way, because at the end of the day, the only thing, only thing you're doing is just hurting your own health whenever you get worked up and wound up over something like that. I mean, it could be anything like, it could be as simple as being out of an item and getting frustrated because, you know, you've been out of this thing for two days now and this is like the fifth person has asked for it and you don't have it to sell. I mean, in, in a situation like that, the best thing you can do is just take corrective action. You know, let somebody know, hey, we need to get these transferred in, make sure it gets done, that sort of thing. I mean, and that's really all you can do. I mean, getting upset about it, that, that's not going to help you at all. So you have to learn to let that kind of stuff go. Um As far as strategies go, or the mindset for the sales, something I've, what I've found that works best for me, I don't really frame what I do here as a sales role. I mean, it is because at the end of, you know, my, 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 the reason why they pay me to come in is to produce profit. Same reason why anybody is paid to come into this place. We are paid to produce profit. And that's fine. But I don't really view myself as a salesman. In my own mind, I kind of frame myself as a solution. Okay. So just follow. So just, you know, this will make sense. Just follow along with me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm selling stuff. That's, that's fine. You know, whatever. But I don't really view it as, as me selling stuff. I view it as I'm providing solutions to a problem customer comes to me and he needs something and this is why he needs it okay I'll make that happen I'm his solution and you'll find that if you can be the solution to a person's problems they'll come back and they'll buy more and if you get really good at it it gets to the point where you don't have to chase it anymore it just comes to you word gets out because that's something you know I'm aware of it because I, I used to, I, you know, I used to stand on that other side of that counter before I did this, you know, us contractors, we talk to each other. We gossip. Oh, do we gossip? We gossip like a bunch of, like a gaggle of high school girls. You would not believe it. Especially the, especially the owners of the companies, all the various companies in the area, in you know, whatever area you happen to work in, they all talk to each other. They do. They may not. They may. They may claim they don't. They may try to play it off like they don't, but they do. They compare prices. They compare suppliers. They ask each other, "Hey, who you been buying from? Are they, are they worth? It? Are they worth dealing, doing business with?" They do that, whether they're telling you or not. They do that, and if you can provide a positive experience, you know, if you can take a problem and make it into something that's not a problem for somebody, they remember that, and they'll tell their friends. They may even tell their competitors. Okay? So, that's kind of one way of looking at that. Um, but yeah, yeah, the, the, all the contractors, they talk to each other. They absolutely do. Because I know back when I still did it full-time, I definitely talked to my competition. At least the ones I was friends with. Um, but be the solution. Don't be a nuisance. Never be a nuisance to a customer. Always be the solution. Because if you can make yourself into the solution, the sales will happen organically on their own. Because I have found that it's really easy to get trapped into the mindset of chasing numbers. Where you're just chasing after numbers. That's all you think about is numbers. And if you find yourself in that situation, it's a little too easy to lose track of what actually matters. Because at the end of the day, yes, we are here to make money, 
but we're also here to provide a service. So if you get too caught up in the numbers and trying to make big numbers and lose track of what's actually important, you know, your customer, that can negatively affect things down the line. Because everyone I sell to regularly, I don't view them as customers necessarily. I view them as business partners. You know, I build that trust with them through a combination of being honest with them and product knowledge and being able to make the impossible seem simple and easy, you know, as far as getting stuff for them or being able to run stuff down or knowing information for them. But you build that trust and you build that partnership and you always view it as a partnership and there's always a give and take there. You know, I'm not looking to take everything they have. I'm not looking to get every penny I can out of them. I do want to make profit on them, but at the end of the day, it's got to be fair. You know, and what's fair, you know, that, that, that all depends. There's so many factors there. I could, I could, I could talk hours about that, but at the end of the day, I'm a partner with them. You know, I have what they need or I can get what they need and I provide a service, you know, I provide solutions and in exchange for solutions, they pay my check, you know, indirectly, but they you know, essentially they do pay my paycheck. So that's, that's kind of how I look at it. Um, <sighs> but you have to be very careful too with that. On the flip side, you never want to put yourself in a situation where you can be taken advantage of or a situation where there either is a conflict of interest or there is an implied conflict of interest. Be very careful with stuff like that. I mean, it's okay to be friendly with the guys you buy from you. I mean, I, I talk to several of my main guys pretty regularly. Ask them how their personal life's going. You know, ask them about their kids, ask them about their hobbies, just to build that rapport. And I do, and I do care about them. I, I do want to know how their life's going, you know, and I, and sometimes I tell them bits and pieces about my personal life, but I don't, I don't usually share a whole lot there. I've always been a private person and that's okay, but you, you don't want to put yourself in a comp, in a situation where you can be taken advantage of. Like if you get too close and you can't separate the personal and the business, you know, you, you can end up in a bad situation. Because that's just the thing, you know, business is business and personal is personal. You got to keep them separate. And sometimes that can be hard to do. But just be very careful with that. And another possibility, another situation that actually happens to me somewhat regularly because of my background and the ability I have, and I'm sure others that are watching this have had this come up to, um, being offered employment by these contractors that buy from us. Now, I'm not going to tell you that you can't work on the side for people that buy from you, but I will tell you I think it's a terrible idea. It's a very, it's a very bad idea because that, that could lead you down a dark path that can put you in a really bad situation with a conflict of interest. Okay? It can put you in a situation where you can be taken advantage of. So be very, very careful. Me personally, even though I can do a whole lot of different things and I've learned how to do a lot of different things, I wouldn't even be tempted to, to do jobs for people as a sub, even with contracts and all that, because I do not want to jeopardize what I have here at the supply house. I'm either going to do one or the other. I'm not going to do both. Now, working for yourself on the side, that's that's different. You know, I, I still work for myself on the side on the weekends and in the evenings. That's a whole different thing from what I'm talking about. But um, just be careful, okay? Uh, I can't really think of anything else I want to talk about there. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, just do the best you can. Don't sweat the small stuff and just be the best person you can. Do the best you can. Thank you.